For all the talent there is in world football, there are certain clubs that consistently churn out some of the best young talent the sport has to offer. Take Ajax for example. Since the 1970s, Ajax's youth academy has produced legends of the game, like Johan Cruyff, Marco van Basten, Frank Rijkaard, Edwin van der Sar, Clarence Seedorf, and Wesley Schneider, just to name a few. Or take a look at Barcelona's La Masia, which by many accounts has overtaken Ajax's academy as the number one academy in the world. After all, it did produce all three Ballon d'Or finalists in 2010. Or even more recently, take a look at the Academy of Olympique Lyon, which has produced French talents, many of whom have performed for the national team, like Karim Benzema, Alex Lacazette, Anthony Martial, Samuel Umtiti, Quarantine Taliso, and Nabo Fakir. The thing about these academies is they have been in place for decades and are linked to some of the most renowned clubs in the world. For teams in countries where the footballing infrastructure is still growing, it's a lot harder to develop homegrown talent and make them known on an international stage. In this video, we'll take a look at three developing academies in three countries on three different continents, but all with a common goal in mind. Develop the sport and produce the best talent that they can. The first academy we'll take a look at is Senegal's Generation Foot, the country's premier footballing academy. Senegal is one of the more developed countries in Africa, with a GDP in the top half of all African nations. Yet despite recent economic growth, over one third of the population still lives below the poverty line. In Senegal, sports are a big part of the culture, and the nation's football team is one of only three African countries to ever reach the quarterfinal of a World Cup. Some players like Kaudu Koulibaly, Edward Mendy, and Nampolis Mendy were born in France but chose to represent Senegal through familial descent. But an increasing percentage of players born in Senegal who play on the national team came by way of the Generation Foot Academy. The academy was started in 2000 by former professional footballer Madi Touré, and has since produced players like former Newcastle striker Papi Cissé, Watford's Ismail Sarr, and the Champions League and Premier League winner Sadio Mane. Of course, we know Mane's inspirational story, leaving his family and making a long journey to the capital city of Dakar for a trial before being signed by Generation Foot. Mane knew he was one of the lucky few who made it, telling Goal.com in 2016 that, quote, Many, many, many people I grew up with were such skillful players and didn't have the chance I did to become a professional. Toure, now the president of Generation Foot, thought the same. Quote, I knew that in Senegal we had lots of talented players, but it was a poor country and I didn't have money. So what did I do? I knocked on every door in the world and asked for help, Toure told BBC in 2016. But only Ligue 1's FC Mets believed, and thus created an exclusive partnership between the two organizations. Each year, Mets takes at least two players to see how their talent keeps up with European football, according to The Sun. Sometimes, like in the case of Mane and Saar, it works out greatly and they become among the most coveted youngsters in the entire world. Sometimes it doesn't, but those players still end up becoming professional footballers. But for Generation Foot, superstardom isn't the main objective. The academy, of course, wants to develop their players both technically and tactically, but they also want to, quote, develop their mind and mentality to have players think for themselves, Andrew Olivier Perrin told BBC. That's why we're attached to a private school. In return for first dibs on talented young players, FC Mets provides tremendous financial support, which includes the education and housing costs of all Generation Foot players. And even if each prospective talent doesn't become a success story in football, it gives them the opportunity to grow as a person. Quote, we aren't going to make 110 professionals out of 110 kids, but we also have a social role to play in Senegal to improve their conditions, Perrin told Daily Nation. Quote, everything is 100% covered. They don't spend a penny and they receive a free education. We want Generation Foot players to be ready for anything, as sportsmen and as people. So yes, the Generation Foot Academy produces some of the country's best players who bring national pride to the country at large every World Cup or Africa Cup of Nations tournament. But also, the potential in these players to earn extraordinary wages benefits Senegal society at large. In June of 2021, Mane, whose father passed away when he was seven from health complications, donated 500,000 Great British Pounds to the Senegalese government to build the first hospital in his hometown of Bamboli. And even if the academy players don't become footballers, the academy still provides a stepping stone for them to improve their lives, their families' lives, and maybe even the lives of Senegalese at large. It's time to take a look at the United States which despite its obsession with sports, is still developing as a serious competitor in the international footballing landscape. Despite an upward trend in Americans playing in Europe, the journeys there vary from player to player. Players like Christian Pulisic and Josh Sargent trained at American youth academies before moving to the youth teams of German clubs like Borussia Dortmund and Werder Bremen, respectively. Then there's the college route. Definitely unorthodox, but it has worked before. The US number one, Zach Steffen, trained in youth academies in the States before attending Maryland University for two years. Steffen then played for Freiburg's reserve team in Germany, came back to America and played in both the USL Championship, the second tier, and MLS, where he was named Goalkeeper of the Year in 2018, before moving to Manchester City on a permanent deal. 
Similarly, Daryl DK, a striker on the United States' Gold Cup roster, played two years at Virginia before entering the MLS Super Draft in 2020. He impressed so much during his first season in the MLS that in February of 2021, EFL Championship side Barnsley signed him on loan. DK scored 9 goals in 19 appearances as Barnsley made a strong push for promotion to the Premier League, but Barnsley ultimately lost to Swansea in the promotion playoffs and DK's release clause was not triggered by the club. Still, a fair few players have found success as products of MLS club's youth academies. At first, the New York Red Bulls were the powerhouse of the youth academy scene. In the 2010s, the club's youth team helped produce the likes of Matt Miazga, Chelsea, most recently on loan at Anderlecht, Tyler Adams, RB Leipzig, and Timothy Weah, Leo. With their affiliation with development farms RB Salzburg and Leipzig, talent can easily be funneled into Europe. Take Caden Clark for example. Although he trained with the Barcelona Academy, yes, that Barcelona, in Arizona for three years, the 18-year-old has been so impressive that he went from a New York Red Bulls second team player to signing for Leipzig in less than a year. And before we talk about another MLS Academy, it's only fair that we do talk about the Barca Residency Academy. Based in Casa Grande, Arizona, the Academy's grounds are a literal haven for any promising football. Opened in 2017, the Barca Residency Academy features the same training in America as the La Masia players undergo in Catalonia. Because of this, the Academy boasts a 100% success rate of either a professional contract or college scholarship offer. And despite only operating for four years, graduates of the Academy include Clark, Corey Baird, the 2018 MLS Rookie of the Year, and two players with the U.S. Men's National Team caps, Julian Araujo of the LA Galaxy, and Matthew Hoppe of Schalke, the only American player to ever score a hat-trick in the Bundesliga. While the Barca Residency Academy continues to develop into one of the best in the country, FC Dallas still firmly holds onto the number one spot. Recently, the Academy has produced U.S. Men's National Team talents such as Weston McKenney, Kellen Acosta, and Reggie Cannon, with many more signing to play in Europe. McKenney, of course, is at the forefront of the U.S. Men's National Team alongside Pulisic, and finds himself in turn playing for Juventus alongside some of the biggest names in world football. Cannon was sold to Boa Vista in Portugal's top flight for $2.75 million in September 2020. Brian Reynolds was signed by Roma for $6.6 million on July 1st, 2021, after loan appearances for the club last season. Two weeks later, another Serie A club, recently promoted Venezia, signed 21-year-old Tanner Tessman. Most recently, current FC Dallas player Ricardo Pepe has been making headlines after becoming the youngest player in MLS history to score a hatch. Despite interest from the Serie A, Pepe just signed a five-year contract extension with the club, but is certain to make his way over to Europe eventually. Not to mention, FC Dallas also has a partnership with Bayern Munich, where the team's best prospects have an opportunity to train with the German powerhouse. Since the club's partnership began, two players have signed on loan to train with Bayern's youth teams, Chris Richards and Justin Shea. Shea returned to FC Dallas just recently in June of 2021, but Richard signed to Bayern for $1.21 million in January of 2019 and was on loan at Hoffenheim this past season. All of this is just to say that the U.S. has been hard at work improving academy standards and producing talent that can certainly play at the European level. But are they working as hard as their Gold Cup semifinal opponents, Qatar, who worked tirelessly to get their national team into the conversation as one of the best in Asia? See, Qatar launched their World Cup bid in 2009 and were granted hosting rights in 2010. But years beforehand, the Qatari government launched the country's premier sporting academy. Founded in 2004, the academy offers scholarships for athletes competing in football, track and field, squash, table tennis, and fencing. Since the academy's inception, 88 athletes have competed in four Olympics, from Beijing 2008 to Tokyo 2020, with the majority competing in track and field events. Since the Beijing Olympics, Qatar has only won three Olympic medals, the two of them being earned in men's high jump by Mutaz Esa Barshi a graduate of the Aspire Academy. Still, the Aspire Academy is focused mostly on football, coinciding with the 2022 World Cup. Qatar had never qualified for a World Cup before, and the World Cup has never been hosted by an Arabic nation either. To make sure they won't embarrass themselves next year, Qatar spent millions of dollars developing their footballing talent. The Aspire Academy currently owns three professional football clubs, two of which, Cultura Leonesa in the Spanish 3rd Division and KAS Upen in the Belgian 1st Tier, serve as a stepping stone from Qatari football to European football. Despite this, no Qatari players are currently part of either squad. One notable Qatari player who has played for KAS Upen before is Akram Afif, who currently plays for All Saud in the Qatar Stars League and was a huge part of the Qatar side that reached the semi-finals in the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Afif is only 24, yet plays the game with the confidence and charisma of a veteran. Despite playing for Al-Sadd, he's taken every step the promising young footballers across Europe's top leagues do. Play for the youth teams of some of the best teams on the continent. He's played for the youth teams of Sevilla and Villarreal, helped KAS Eupen achieve promotion to Belgium's top flight for only the second time in club history, made history by becoming the first Qatari signing in La Liga with Villarreal, and the first Qatari to ever appear in La Liga with Sporting Gijon on loan. 
Still, Afif was never really given the opportunity to stick around, and Villarreal ended up sending him back to Al Saad, where his professional career started. Al Saad signed him on a two-year loan, and in the second year also signed the legendary Xavi as manager. Under Xavi, Afif's stalled career took on a new life. During the 2019 calendar year and 2019-20 season, Afif won the Qatari Super League with Al Saad, was the top scorer and assist getter in the Qatari League, was named Qatari League player for the second straight year, won the AFC Asian Cup with his national team, and was named Asian Footballer of the Year. More importantly, to the story, however, is that Afif graduated from the Aspire Academy, and so did Almoz Ali, another key player on the Qatari national team, and so did eight other players on Qatar's Gold Cup roster. See, despite having an international presence and a partnership with Leeds United, it's the players that stayed in Qatar after Aspire Academy that helped transform the national team from a pretender to contender. And as you can see, in this global game, any country can produce world-class talent, whether it's Sadio Mane, Christian Pulisic, or Akram Afif. But no matter the size or development of a nation, Consistently churning out these players is difficult without an established team's pipeline and or plenty of funding. Any country is capable of producing the next La Masia or Ajax Academy. All they need is a little help. If you made it all the way to the end, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as the last one, and I appreciate all the support. We hit 40,000, which is absolutely insane. If you do enjoy the content, make sure to let me know, share with your friends, leave a like, subscribe. These videos take a ton of time in researching and editing and putting everything together, so I really appreciate your support. And let me know what other content you want to see from me. I'm open to all suggestions.